Good evening, everybody. I wanted to take a minute and create a video to walk through the steps of how to record merchant fees. It gets a little confusing in QuickBooks Online. Uh, a lot of people are having questions in various groups that I'm in, so I thought this would just give a little value and kind of help walk you through it because it's easier to show you than it is to sort of explain it. So basically, let's just look at a scenario. You charge a customer $500. And then it goes through something like Stripe or Square, a third party merchant service, where they reduce, they take $50 off for a fee. Therefore, you only have $450 deposited in the bank. So, how do you get that to match? How do you get the customer's payment that was received to match the bank deposit after the fee? That's the question, the million dollar question. So, I'm going to walk through that with you guys now. Hopefully, that will shed some light on this rather it's very simple, but a little bit complicated topic. All right, so I have a demo file I set up here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go into sales. And we're going to take a look under invoices here. And I have a customer, Lisa, here. Uh, you can see the date here is 425. It was due on 525. It was paid, but not deposited. So when I go in here, I see that Lisa has a payment up here. When you receive a payment, if you're using Dubsado and it's conducting the payment for you, it's going to mark this up here. So it's linked. You'll click on the payment to go into it. You can see that there's the 425. I received the $90, which is exactly what we'd expect to see. And now I'm in the payment itself, which is for $90, like it should be. The first step is you want to make sure that your deposit is going to this account here, and that is called undeposited funds. Undeposited funds is an account that exists only in QuickBooks. It is just a place for funds to collect so that you can deposit them into your actual bank account in QuickBooks the way they hit your physical bank. So if you had, um, let's just say, three different checks that were $100 each, and they came in on different days, but you don't go to the bank until Friday, you'd want to use this account to put those payments, all separate checks into that account, and then on Friday, maybe you deposit them all, then you'll record the deposit of all the checks, not just the one. So undeposited funds is just sort of like, literally like the pile, if you think about a pile on your desk of things that need to go to the bank, that's what undeposited funds is, and that allows you to lump it together to match your bank statement. I hope that that makes sense. This is, this is another one of those really confusing things for many people. This account mystifies people, and it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but once you start seeing it working, it, it starts to make sense. Anyways, so our payment is reported to undeposited funds. So what does that do? I'm going to save and close this. That means that when I go up to the plus and I go to bank deposit, anything sitting in undeposited funds is going to be listed here. So we can see that I have Lisa's payment here and I need to deposit it into my bank. My bank account is right here. And this is my date for the deposit. Okay, so now you've seen all these pieces. So now we're gonna rewind and we're gonna go back. We are going to go look at the banking. We're gonna go look at what I downloaded. And I know right here, 427, this Lisa's payment was processed through Stripe and it came in at 87.09. So, quick math tells me that $90 minus 87.09 is a fee of $2.91, right? So now all I need to do is go back up. I'm going to make my deposit. I'm going to select Lisa's invoice. So now my deposit is $90. I'm going to make sure it's going to the right bank account. And I'm going to make sure it's for the right date. I'm going to use 430 for this example. Okay. Then the important step is down here. I'm going to, I'm going to say receive from, a, I'm going to say Stripe, but maybe you're using Square or something else. So you'll want to use that instead. I always create an account called Bank and Merchant Fees, and that's where I put anything, any bank charges, any merchant charges, go here. So you'll, you'll 
create who it's who is who you're receiving this fee from this expense account so it's important that this is an expense account because we're going to enter this number negative so we're going to subtract two dollars and ninety one cents so now my deposit is going to match what hit the bank I am recording the full amount I received from Lisa which is appropriate I'm not altering my sales or my revenue by any means and I am Oops, we lost that. And I am also recording, this is gonna sound crazy, but a negative deposit into an expense account, which actually creates an expense, like a positive expense. So I'm recording that. So I'm gonna hit save and close so you guys can see. So, oh, look at that magic. So now that I've done that, I have one record in, on my books that matches this bank deposit and we know we just did it. So all I have to do is hit match. So now if I go to my reports and I look at a profit and loss, this will kind of give you an idea. It's a sample file, so let's just take a look. Uh, we'll say we'll say all dates, cash. So now I can look in here and I can see so. Part of that, so now you'll see my services and you'll see my bank and merchant fees. Part of this bank and merchant fees you're gonna see in here is the $2.91. So it appropriately recorded the fee. And in my services, my income, you're going to see the $90. Right here, this $90 for Lisa. And so everything is recorded appropriately. Simple, easy as that. Feel free to watch this as many times as you need or reach out to me in person if you get stuck. I am Tiffany Bastion. Uh, you can find me at www.bastionaccounting.com. Uh, you can see, there we go. So I hope that helped. Have a wonderful evening.